Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to Young Money Investments. My name is Cameron Benyon and today we have a little bit of a recap. I apologize that it has been a minute since I have made a video um, and this is kind of an important time. I think I uh, you know, should be making more videos, especially in a downturn or a pullback in the market. Um, I think this is the time when I want a lot of you new investors to really be able to see what great buying opportunities there are in the market. And uh, I'm kind of one of those that doesn't really uh, panic too much, or I haven't really been panicked. If there was reason to panic in a downturn or in a pullback like this, I would have been a lot more stressed. Granted, I, I added a little bit more stress to myself in terms of some of the leverage and some of the, the things that I did in order to make a little bit more money um, in this, this specific pullback. But I want to get into a couple things today. Um, in a couple positions, I want to kind of cover a little bit on some of the positions that I had talked about in my previous video, what I'm still seeing with them, where I'm still at with them, what I did as the market went down, did I buy more, did I end up selling some, you know, what are some, some of the things that I've done. Another thing I wanna point out, hopefully this whole like, this whole setup over here is a little bit better. If you notice it's getting better, like, I'm looking at everything on the, on the, on the monitor here, Lighting, hopefully that's pretty good. Uh, as you can tell, I just got home from uh, I just got home from work right now, so I am I'm still in my my work attire, and it's like, okay, I got home like quite a while ago. I got home like a few hours ago, but it's 11:40, guys. I am trying to film this to get this all all done and completed, just because it is hard. It's hard, um, you know. And this is kind of another thing I want to talk about. If any of you uh, aspiring entrepreneurs out there are interested or you know if you're trying to figure out how to make money day trading or how to make money swing trading how to make money in the stock market um, my biggest piece of advice that I can give just because I've had several uh, you know younger guys kind of kind of reminiscent of myself when I first started here uh, selling kind of asked me you know like Cameron could you mentor me could you help me kind of to um, to to get on that path to kind of get where you're at and I think the biggest piece of advice that I, I would have is find that cash flow, find something that you are good at that doesn't require risk in order for you to make that money. I, a great thing for me has been summer sales. Um, and that's kind of my plug of the night for uh, for ADT and for what I do. Um, I'm always looking for good, for good um, salesmen that are interested and willing to learn more than anything that are willing to put in the hard work and dedication it takes um, in order to, to be good at this. But this job is one of those great jobs that um, honestly and truly is a life changer. It's a game changer. Um, but I do want to jump into kind of the, the charts. I want to jump into, you know, like I said, what I've been able to do. So, um, this is what we're going to do here in terms of looking up some of my positions. I'm going to minimize this down, probably get us like somewhere right in there. Let's see here. No, I do not want to draw on the chart here. And I just want to go over some of the positions that I am currently sitting in right now. So hopefully that hopefully that pulls up. Let me look at OBS really quickly and just see where we're we're seated. Let's do. I mean that's good, right? That's like big enough. You can still see me. Um, all right, perfect. So couple positions. Let's go over the Mac Daddy of them all. Hold on. Good old Rhett Van Leeuwen um, is messaging me right now. You know what? I am going to pay you back next month. I'll text him back here in a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do here, speaking of Rhett, be careful. Be careful. Rhett's been learning some crazy lessons lately, and I can only say that because me and Rhett are good buddies, but don't day trade if you are just getting into the stock market game. Um, that's all I'm going to say. We'll, me and Rhett will probably film a few more. Well, not probably. We're going to film a lot more videos this fall, um, kind of about the, the pros and the cons of the things that he does, and I'll let him explain more about it later on, but... Let's jump into the, the chart pattern here. I wanted to first go over the Mac Daddy of all positions that I'm currently in right now, and that is going to be ticker symbol CAT. Um, so CAT right now, if you if we pull up the chart pattern on here and take a look at what we're what we're seeing. Oh, 
fudge. One of my roommates is watching some loud movie right now. So hopefully y'all can't hear that. And hopefully he closes the door. Um, but cat. So this is one that I do want to get into really quickly. As you can see right here, if you can see going all the way back on this 180 day chart right here, what do you see? I see some support right here but I also see a little bit of support right in here. Notice where it came up really high, hit kind of a, a ceiling, hit resistance, and came back down to about here. Started trending up, came back down here. Touched, came back up, touched. Came back down, came up, came back down, came up, and then it hit this little support, and then just continued to trend up. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I would do here is if you wanted to draw a nice little support line, right as we do right here. Um, and I would draw it right, okay, right, yeah. Boom, right there. I would say, look at that chart pattern right there and look how consistent it has been consolidating right here at around $134. Um, if you can buy in a little bit more, uh, down here at about 134.50, 134.67-ish. That is a great buy point. I do see a nice little pattern where we should see some uh, uptrends. And if you want to day trade this for a nice little 3% return, I think there's some great opportunity in CAT. Now, like I said, I see CAT as a longer term potential. I am not going to day trade this because I see this being able to be ridden up a much higher. I see being able to ride this up from here, kind of, well, I bought in up here. I think my average cost in, to be completely 100% honest with you, um, is obviously higher. I'm down a couple percentage, I'm down like two or between two and three, like 2.2, 2.3% in CAT. You know what, that's not my effing account. That's embarrassing. I gotta switch over to another account here. Log out. Log in. There we go. That's the big account. Um. So cat, with those 283 shares right now, I am averaged in at about 139.79. So I'm averaged in right up here. Um, 139.79. It's actually leveraged in right here. I see being able to ride this all the way back up into this price point right here. So I see about a good 9% return. Now, honestly and truly, should I buy potentially more Caterpillar right down in this range right here? Sure, where it's trading at about 135. I mean, today it's up 1.48%. Um, it's kind of hitting, it's hitting kind of resistance over the past week. Um, but I do see, again, I don't see this dropping down. Now, if I do start seeing this drop down more, I'm going to probably have to get out of it. But I'm only sitting down right now. I take that back. I'm sitting down 2.8% in Caterpillar. So I don't see a big a big reason to sell. I see a lot of support. I see a lot of consolidation. Over here, this took about a month where it was consolidating before it started this uptrend pattern. So may this take time? Sure, it might. But I'm sitting in it about... Uh, 38, 39,000 uh, dollars in this this current position that I'm in in Caterpillar. I see no reason to not continue to hold that. Um, during the sell-off, I also bought in some more on Amazon. I'm not going to go over the chart pattern on that just because it's it's kind of uh, a moot point. Um, I did buy in more on uh, Libre Mercado, and I know I have Libre Mercado, N E L I. Um, I've talked about the horizontal chart pattern with Melly forever. Look at this, just so consistent. Um, you are going to start to see some issues right here with the SMA acting as resistance. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this come up here to about 310 um, and then seeing a sell off. I am a little too big in this position because I've had to average my cost down. I'm at a $30,000 position in this, and this is not a company I do see long. I mean, I do see long term value, but. I want to swing more. I shouldn't be using 30 G's and having it tied up in this. So I'm probably going to hit like 310 and probably drop my coconuts in this. Um, I just don't see continuing it because it is such a horizontal pattern. If it's able to break this SMA, which it very well might. I mean, what I might look for because as far as writing it down, I see it writing down into this 289 area. 
Um, I mean, and that's basically, ugh, that actually is a lot more percent for profit than I'd like to lose, but a 6.48% potential for profit. I don't see buying any of this right now unless you can see it start to break above this 317 mark. But um, I am holding a larger position in Melly than I would probably like to see or probably what I would recommend doing right now. Um, if you, it does have a sell-off and you do end up buying down here at the 290 mark, I do see a lot of value though in uh, Libre Mercado right now. So that is a good one. Even my Colombian friend Jonathan loves Libre Mercado. I'm sure his ancestors love it too. Or his uh, his relatives. Abajo in Colombia. Um, anyway... Another position that I have done very well in as of recently, today we have OLED up 5%. This is one that has kind of been disappointing for me, honestly and truly, because I thought I would start to see this bad boy start ripping and coming up into this, this $150 price range, um, and it has not. Um, I have continued to buy in to OLED, OLED. I'm about at break even right now. In fact, I am at break even. I'm, I'm averaged in about $87 a share. Um, I do see this, obviously, this little uh, this little level of support right down here at roughly $79, $80 a share. Um, you know, I honestly and truly, I, I see this being able to trend up, and it should be able to get back in here. If you notice right here, this is going to act as resistance. So tomorrow, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with uh, OLED. If it is able to break this and continue this uptrend pattern, I do see long-term value in OLED. Um, that's probably the reason I have another 29, 20, 30K in OLED. But today was a nice freaking gain um, of about 1100 to get back to break even on that. But uh, L Brands took a little bit of a 2.3% loss. I'm going to go over L Brands as well right now just because of the fact that um, it is having quite a little bit of a sell-off uh, back right here. I do see a nice little support line right here. So um, this SMA should start to act as support for it, um, even after today's little sell-off. So if you kind of take this chart a little bit closer, we should be seeing this where this acts as support down here. So if you can buy in somewhere around that $35 price point, I do see being able to swing this up here for a nice little 6% return. I am long in, in L Brands, and I think one of my problems with L Brands right now is the fact that I am, uh, what should I, I'm, I'm trying to hold this long term because I see long term potential, but I'm also wanting to swing it, and it's hard to swing something that you see long term value in because you want to hold on when it continues to do well, and then when it goes down, you like want to put more money into it, and that's probably why I am in that uh, with another 28K. Um, Cirrus Logic, another one that has done very well for me today. C R U S. Um, they are looking at it right now. You can see where they are starting this uptrend. Could it potentially be hitting a ceiling right here? Sure, it really could. This could actually act as a as a ceiling potentially right now um, that it is kind of breaking through. Um, and we'll have to watch this. I'll have to watch this chart pattern. I don't see or recommend buying into it. If you do look at the RSI indicator, if anything, this would be a good time to sell, take profits, um, and watch it kind of trend down where you could end up making a nice little, you know, 4.5% profit. It was up about 5% today, so that makes makes sense if it was to sell down. Um, I do see, again, Cirrus Logic is a long-term hold. I should probably sell out part of my position because I don't want to have as much money tied up in Cirrus Logic as I have tied up in them right now. All my possession, positions, I've just kind of added more. Uh, Callaway Golf, I'm holding about a thousand shares of them right now as well. They're doing pretty decent. Um, Alibaba, again, did, did decently well for me. FedEx is something that I just got in. Uh, FedEx is another long-term hold, FDX, that I just got into. Um, I don't know if I went over why, but um, if you do look at this right here, and kind of the consolidation, um, you can see where it had to consolidate quite a bit, um, and it should be able to start that uptrend pattern. I think it's it's very oversold. I mean, I bought down in down in here when it was deep blue for the uh, RSI indicator. Um, I still think it's a good buy to get into anywhere right in here at that 227, 229 price point for FedEx. Um, I don't have a massive position, I believe, in FedEx already. I do plan to continue to buy potentially. 
um, as it goes up, but I'm currently only holding a total of $9,000 worth of FedEx right now. Apple doing me good. MU is a stock that has, wow, um, MU, let's see, yeah, um, MU has had a nice little day today. Um, there is some issues in terms of some Chinese, um, honestly, like espionage, basically, in terms of stealing patents and products and things like that from MU. If you'll notice, MU recently had this massive sell-off, so if I can tap out of it, um, you'll notice I had this massive sell-off here, kind of coming into support. I see a good little buying opportunity right here. That's why I am currently in it. I mean, even if you get back up into here, you're looking at about a 12% return um, on your investment. But I do see, like I said, a good little return on MU. I do see a good buying opportunity currently where it's sitting at in terms of price points and things like that. Last company that we are going to go over real briefly um, is going to be Win Resorts. So Win Resorts, the reason why I got into Win Resorts, guys, um, Win Resorts is not a company that's been in my portfolio or actually the style of, you know, obviously them being a hotel and a luxury brand hotel right now. Um, normally not something I'd want to get into, but I kind of did a nice little dip buy on this. Um, I bought down here after it had this massive 7% sell off. As you can see before, it's done this in the past. This is, I'm going off of previous, previous patterns and kind of how history repeats itself. If you take a look up here, it went from 203 guys down to lows of $159. Like it sold off hard, 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 hardcore. Um, I see that as a nice little return. I mean, that was a 21% uh, sell-off on that. I do see, like I said, with the, the sell-off that it has had, again, up here from basically from support or uh, resistance up here, it has had another nice catastrophic sell-off. Um, could it potentially, you know, not reverse? Sure. But I do see, like I said, if you look at the chart pattern, you can see a lot of consolidation going on right here before a very slow upward pattern before it had a buck up and then a little upward, 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 you know, just continual trend. Um, you can see right down here, it is consolidating. It's kind of taking its time, keeping a nice little trend along this line right here where I'll draw a nice little support for it. Uh, there we go. A little support for it. That way I will remember uh, when I when I come back and look at it. But yeah, there we go. Nice little support. Comes all the way over. I see good support on it. I did a small little dip buy on uh, Win Resorts. Just because if you look at RSI indicator, this is a classic swing trade. I don't plan on holding this long term. But if you do look at the RSI indicator, it was way, 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 way oversold down here. Um, so I am looking to hold that, kind of write it up here a little bit. Um, currently, I only have a $4,600 position. I think I'm holding a total of like 30 shares, I want to say. 20 shares, maybe. 30 shares. 30 shares of win. That is what I'm looking at in terms of a little swing trade that I am in. Honestly and truly, guys, the thing that I want to go over with the stocks that I'm in right now is that Everything that I'm kind of kind of in right now, I have zero stress. Like I, I don't know if you can tell, I'm super stress free right now. And I think part of the fact and part of the reason I'm so stress free is just because of the fact that the markets aren't as bad as people think. The markets are pretty dang good, um, and I see a lot of long term value in all this. So that is it, guys. That's the that's my picks. Those are my plays. That's my call outs and my, kind of my strategies and kind of what I'm in right now, position size. I know you probably like to know those things. If you want to leave some messages in the comment section, please do so. I just realized I didn't have my um, magic, what was it called? Um, like my video converter thing to make the stream or the bit rate a little bit better on this. So if it's a little choppy, forgive me. It, this setup is going to continually get better right now. I think it's getting a whole lot better than what it was before. If y'all have any questions, like I said, please leave them in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching Young Money Investments and have a blessed day. And, uh, you know, just remember, stay green, stay green. And uh, if you have any other questions, Hit me up. Talk to y'all later. Bye.